It's hot outside, but the weather is nice, so you take your dog out to play. You should take caution, though. Your poor pooch isn't quite as well equipped as you to shed excess body heat. Let's explore the symptoms of overheating in dogs, how to prevent it, and what to do about it in an emergency. You're watching Animal Facts. First off, if you're watching this video because you think your dog is overheating and don't know what to do, there is a timestamp in the description that you can jump to. Go click that now. One of the adaptations that humans gain to deal with heat is our lack of body hair. This adaptation allowed us to thrive spending hours a day hunting in the heat of the open savanna. We shed excess heat by sweating. Our four-legged friends, descending from wolf populations in Europe between 20,000 to 40,000 years ago, however, aren't so gifted in that area. While being furry has many advantages for cool climate species, shedding heat is not one of them. Dogs do sweat through their paw pads, but it's by panning that dogs circulate the necessary air through their bodies to cool down. This is efficient in cooler climates, but in hot weather, your dog's respiratory system lacks the surface area to get the job done. Because prevention is always the better road than treatment, let's start by discussing how to keep your dog from getting overheated. First and foremost, never leave a dog in a parked car. Even in nice 80 degree weather, the temperature inside a parked car can exceed 130 degrees in as little as 15 minutes. That quick little trip into the store can be long enough to be dangerous for your dog, even with the windows cracked. This is one of the most prevalent causes of heat stroke and heat related deaths of dogs. It can be easily prevented, just don't do it, not for even just a minute. In the dead of summer, try to limit outdoor play to the cooler parts of the day, such as early morning or late afternoon. A good rule of thumb, if it's warm for you, is downright hot for your pooch. You should always encourage resting and drinking water when outdoors for extended periods of time with your dog. Of course, many dogs love water, which is always a fun way to beat the heat. Just be careful, not all dogs doggy paddle well. And of course, always bring water for your dog to drink while you're out and about, and encourage her to drink it often. Dogs pant when they're hot. Of course, panting doesn't always mean it's overheating. But excessive panning is a good early warning. If you think your dog may be panning due to heat, immediately start taking steps to cool her down. Offer water and encourage your dog to take a break in the shade. With the panning, you should watch for abundance of drooling. At that point, you should probably consider taking your dog indoors. Further and more serious signs include unstable on their feet or collapse, or its gum color can turn bluish purple, bright red, or pale from lack of oxygen. And then there are extreme signs that indicate you should seek a vet immediately, as they can indicate heat stroke. Those are disorientation, elevated heart rate, vomiting, diarrhea, labored breathing, and anxiety. So, what should you do if your dog is overheated? According to the Canine Training Center, if your dog's temperature is 105 degrees or more, take immediate action, and always cool the dog off at home before traveling to the vet. How do you cool your dog off? Use tap water, lukewarm, not hot or ice cold, to douse the dog. Water that is too cold constricts blood vessels and decreases the vessel's ability to effectively transport sufficient amount of blood back to the body, therefore taking longer to cool the dog off. While dousing the dog with water, set a fan to blow on the dog. Move the dog to shade or AC. Do not force the dog to drink water. Your dog may be too focused on breathing to drink. Allow him to drink when he is ready. Continue all cool down attempts until the panning stops. Stop cooling once the dog's temperature gets to 103 degrees. Cooling any further could lead to hypothermia. Take your dog to the vet when she is cooled and at a temperature of 103.
According to Ernest Ward, DVM, heat stroke is the term commonly used for hyperthermia or elevated body temperature. If a dog's temperature exceeds 103 degrees Fahrenheit, it's considered hypothermic. Body temperatures of above 106 degrees Fahrenheit are commonly referred to as heat stroke. The critical temperature where multiple organ failure and impending death occur is around 107 degrees to 109 degrees Fahrenheit. The prognosis depends on how high the body temperature elevated, how long the hypothermia persisted, and what the physical condition of the dog was prior to the heat stroke. If the body temperature didn't become extremely high, most healthy pets will recover quickly if they are treated immediately. Some dogs may experience permanent organ damage or may die at a later date from complications that develop secondarily from hypothermia. Dogs that experience hyperthermia are at greater risk for subsequent heat stroke due to damage to the thermoregulatory center. Any further exposure to heat should be kept at a minimum. While all dogs are at risk for heat exhaustion and heat stroke, if allowed to overheat without treatment, some breeds are at higher risk than others. This is mostly breeds that aren't able to cool down as quickly as others, and are often the brachycephalic breeds. Brachycephalic breeds are dogs that have shortened or squished faces. Because their muzzles and heads are shortened and widened, but with the same amount of soft tissue as a regular dog, they often have difficulty breathing. Therefore, they have difficulty cooling down. Those breeds include Bulldogs, English, American, and French, Pugs, Boxers, Cavalier King Charles Spaniels, Akitas, Boston Terriers, Pekingese, Shih Tzus, Chow Chows, Sharpays, and Bullmastiffs, among others. Dogs such as Siberian Huskies and Alaskan Malamutes or other Arctic dogs should also be closely monitored. And with these double-coated breeds, shaving won't keep them cooler. It will just make regulating the temperature more difficult, because as I mentioned earlier, dogs don't get rid of heat through their skin. They lose it through their respiratory system. I don't always cover medical topics, but some are prevalent enough to take time off to cover. I'll get back to the fun stuff next time. Until then, hey, stay cool, and keep your dog cool. And as always, catch you next time.